levels of faith. Yesterday we talked about three levels of faith and the characteristics of the persons on each of the levels. And also the three categories of personalities that engage in devotional service. Uttama, Madhyaman, and Kanista. So now we're moving into another area of discussion. Sarva Bhutesha Yad Pasyed Bhagavam Bhavam Atmanaha Bhutani Bhagavatmani Esa Bhagavatotamaha a person advanced in devotional service sees within everything the soul of souls, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Consequently, he always sees the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the cause of all causes and understands that all things are situated in him. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. 11 to 45. So this particular translation is quite a sweeping coverage of the position of the Supreme Lord. And one who sees according to that position. All things are situated in, in him. Everything comes from him. His form is the source and the principle of all emanations, both material and spiritual. This is understood by those advanced in devotional service. There are many souls, but there is that soul of all souls, and that is Sri Krishna. Okay. All existence is spiritual, but it manifests itself in different aspects of itself according to the consciousness of the living entities. Therefore, material simply means a consciousness that is marginal from the absolute principle of existence. In other words, seeing something separate from Krishna means material. There's nothing material because nothing is separated from Krishna. But for the sake of function, we make this distinction. And that is due to the misuse of the independence of the living entity, which manifests as something as connected and something as uh, disconnected. But nothing is ever disconnected. It's simply an, a, a wrong consciousness. Mm -hmm. so material means wrong consciousness. Mm -hmm. Uh, one who is advanced in devotional service sees Krishna in everything and everything in Krishna and sees that all things exist in him. And therefore, there can never be anything material because he is totally and completely spiritual. Okay, next verse. Okay, so we just heard from the, the, the quotation in the previous verse describes the topmost vision. Here is the next vision down. Uh, an intermediate second class devotee shows love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is friendly to all devotees, and is very merciful to neophytes and ignorant people. The intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. This is also a quotation from the same Srimad Bhagavatam, same area 11 to 46. This statement was made by the great sage Narada while he was speaking to Vasudeva about devotional service. This subject was originally discussed between Mimi, the king of Videha, and the nine Yogendras. That's the reference in the Bhagavatam 11.246 is between King Mimi and the nine Yogendras. 
there is one particular Yugendra, I think, I'm not sure which Yugendra, there were nine, and they each discussed a particular subject matter with King Mimi. And uh, this particular one is the stages of execution of devotional service. Here we have the second class stage. Namaste, Sarah's Vakti Deve, or Vani Pachari Ne, near Visesa Sunya Vari, Pastyat Yede Satarine, Vansha Kalpa through Vishya Kripa Sindhu, Ve Vacha Patitanam, Pavane Bio, Vaishnave Bio, Namahon Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada Rishi Vasadi Gaur Vakravindu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So um, here in this particular verse, we get an indication of the four, the four characteristics of the intermediate devotee. I, before we go into the explanation of these four, we should uh, understand that this is where our Krishna consciousness movement is situated. We are not situated on execution devotional service from the highest principle, nor from the lowest principle. We are not Kanista Arikaris or Uttama Arikaris generally. We are Madhyama Arikaris, and this is the platform of how our society operates. So note these four principles, and these are the characteristics and activities of the second class or intermediate devotee. And so shows love for the Supreme Personality of God. Friendly to all devotees. Two, merciful to those who are neophyte devotees and those who are ignorant. In other words, that mercy manifests itself in the form of preaching or teaching. And the last one, uh, those who are envious, mischievous, openly against devotional service and God itself, the atheist, these persons, we give them no regard we do not give them any darshan. We don't give them any any credit. He said they are simply neglected by the devotee on the second class platform. Um, the first is easy to understand, showing love to Krishna. This is the process is meant to awaken that love in the process of devotional service, shravanam, kirtanam, uh, Krishna smaranam is the means by which that love is awakened along with devotional, practical devotional activities. So to love Krishna is the principle of devotional service. And this is mentioned first out of the four statements, four characteristics here, because it's the most important. Friendly to all devotees. In other words, makes friends with all devotees. Or friendly. We might say to be more specific. Has friends and is friendly. <laughs> um, to, be, to have friends with everyone is not possible or even practical. But to be friendly to all is the nature uh, because a devotee doesn't see uh, anyone as his enemy and therefore he is friendly to everyone. Mercy, very merciful. The word very is there in the translation. Very merciful to the neophytes, those who are on a lesser level or the kanista adhikaris. 
and people in general, ignorant people, and that is the materialistic persons who are not in the last category, uh, envious, mischievous, atheistic. So not all ignorant people, but mostly all except for that small group, which is actually <laughs> growing every day. <laughs> that small group is moving into a larger number as Kali Yuga goes on, people who are envious, who people who are adverse, people who are completely against God. Mm -hmm. And there are people, there are those who, who don't believe in God, and there's those who know God exists, but have a very uh, negative attitude towards him and reject everything that is religious or spiritual and consider God to be their enemy. And they compete with God for the position of enjoyer and controller. This is a demoniac mentality, must be completely um, uh, discarded. Uh, merciful to the neophytes and ignorant per per persons. So what is this saying that everyone should, who is practicing devotional service, must come to the platform of showing mercy to others. That means reaching out with Krishna consciousness in some form or another as a regular service attitude towards these two groups, the lesser devotees and those who are gross materialists but who are not openly and envious towards the devotees, the innocent, we might say. I think the word Bali Sheshu, uh, Bali Sheshu gives the inner ignorant or the innocent. Mm -hmm. Bali also Sheshu means those who are, uh, um, has another meaning. It means more like childlike also, childlike in relationship to their understanding of God. Not childish, but childlike. Um, so, um, as it's explained in the Bhagavatam, that one cannot stay or one should not stay on the lowest platform, which will be explained in the next verse. We'll get to that soon that one has to raise themselves up to this second class platform. Otherwise, one cannot make progress towards the ultimate goal, which is to show love and develop love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay, so these are, when these characteristics are explained in greater detail than the Rupa Goswami's Upadesh Amrita, um, where he explains these three groups and their characteristics. So becoming a preacher is uh, not uh, necessarily means that one has to take the position of a public speaker, but it means one has to somehow or other develop this mood of being very merciful to these two types of people, the neophyte devotees and people in general. <laughs> so that means one should, one has to be an instrument for Krishna's mercy towards these persons. <laughs> that is required. Otherwise one will stay on the lowest platform and that'll be described in the next verse, which means one cannot progress beyond a certain level. Okay, let's go to the last one. And I think that's what, yeah. Archiam evaharaye pujayastraraye hate tad bhakti shu chanye shu sabhakti prakriti smritaha. So here we go. A Prakriti Bhakta or materialist devotee does not purposely study the Shastras and try to understand the actual standards of pure devotion. 
service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regular principles learned from the spiritual master or from his family who worship the deities. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. Such a person is bhakta praya, neophyte devotee, or bhakta bas, for he is, is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy, purport. This verse is also from that same area, 11 to 4 by Srila Bhakti Vinoda, of course, says that one who has full love for the Supreme Personality, personality of God and who maintains a good friendship with the Lord is always callous to those who envy Krishna and Krishna's devotee. Such a person is to be considered an intermediate devotee. He becomes a first class devotee when, in course of advancing in devotional service, he feels an intimate relationship with all living entities, seeing them as part and parcels of the Supreme. So here, it seems like the purport is going back to the previous verse as describing the intermediate devotee here. This is somewhat uh, confusing for me. Uh, it doesn't expand on this particular verse here. But the purport, but the translation does give the characteristics of a prakriti bhakti, a materialistic devotee. Uh, doesn't show proper respects to advanced devotees. Doesn't study the shastras or understand what is the principles of pure devotional service. He has he has a spiritual master. He's trying to advance. Uh, he follows the regulative principles. But generally, he is envious of the higher devotees. That's why the first statement gives some indication. She is a bhakti Vinoda, of course, said one who has full love for the soul, takes good friendship with the Lord, is always callous to those who envy Krishna and Krishna's devotees. So this is what is being said here. And these are persons who are on the low platform, and they have this still have this envious attitude. Those who don't are considered to be intermediate devotees. So it seems like this is a clear dividing line between those who are envious and those who are non envious. The difference between neophyte and uh, Madhyama or middle devotee. Go to the next verse and see if there's a further elaboration on this one. No. Um, go back and then go back to the previous verse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to uh, go a little further into the translation, although it's curious. Um, in this particular uh, purport, there's not much discussion on the characteristics of this materialist ability, but you'll find that in the uh, in that Bhagavatam verse 11 to 47, it does describe it in more detail. So you can go to that verse. <coughs> so here, okay. A devotee who faithfully engages in the worship of the deity in the temple, but does not behave properly to other devotees or people in general is called a prakrita bhakta, a materialist devotee and is considered to be in the lowest position. Purport, Sri Madhvachari comments that one in the lowest stage of devotionalism who faithfully worships the deity and the temple, who is not aware of the Supreme Personality is actually all pervading. This same mentality can be seen in Western countries where people commit all types of sinful activities in their homes and in the street, but then piously go to the church and pray to God for mercy. <laughs> Actually, God is in our home, God is in the street, God is in our office, God is in the far, is in the forest, God is, and therefore God should be worshipped everywhere by the process of devotional service of his lotus feet. Now I'll go down the page. A devotee should not see anything. Uh, this verse, this bad purport will go on and on. Let's see how far it goes. 
think it, let's see how, how many pages it is. It's really, it might go forever here. <laughs> yeah, it's quite long. Okay. We won't go into this whole thing here, but we'll go back a little bit more. Go up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Whoops. You, you didn't stop. Mm -hmm. you, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, go up a little bit up the page or down the page. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So I stopped you. Whoops. We lost it again. Uh, you have to follow what I'm saying instead of just keep punching the button. You know, <laughs> listen to what I say, and then you'll be able to follow. Uh, now take it down a little bit more. No, the other way. Down, down means going down. The other way. Yeah. Okay. Right. Another symptom of the canista alicari is the infatuated by the material qualifications of so-called great materialistic persons. Hmm. Having a bodily concept of life himself, he is attracted by material life, and this minimizes the position of the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Such a canista arikari therefore is disturbed if a second-class devotee criticizes the non-devotees of the Lord. In the name of compassion or kindness, the canista approves of the non-devotional activities for such materialistic men. Because the Kanista Akari is ignorant of the higher realms of devotional service and the unlimited transcendental bliss of Krishna, now he sees devotional service merely as the religious aspect of life, but thinks that life has many enjoyable and worthwhile the non devotional aspects. Therefore, he becomes angry when second class devotees are experienced that Krishna is everything criticizes the non-devotees. Madhvacharya says such a person, because of his rudimentary faith, is considered a devotee, but he is bhakta dhamma, a devotee on the lowest standard. If such materialist devotees follow the rules and regulations of deity worship, they will gradually be elevated to a higher standard, eventually become pure devotees of the Lord, unless they commit offenses against other devotees, in which case their advancement will be checked. So here we're getting a little indication. They still have tendencies towards a materialistic society and like to glorify the qualities and activities of the materialistic personalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we might say that if a non-devotee speaks something that has some value, without, we can take that and use it to support a principle of Krishna consciousness. It's like we call it taking gold from a filthy place. Sometimes we do that. that the non-devotees say something that has some relevant in some matter of devotional life. In using that, um, it's we're not glorifying the non-devotees, nor are we glorifying their activities. But uh, again, taking gold from a filthy place, that verse uh, is by Chanaka Pandit, where he says, one can accept a wife from a very obscure background if she has good qualities, although she's coming from a low class family, if she has good qualities, she may also be accepted. Um, there are other th statements also in regards to taking something from a filthy place, apparently, or a non devotional place, and accepting it as a principle for execution of devotional service. Not as a principle, but as a supporting principle. We should clarify that. <laughs> but we don't give any credit to the non-devotees, although you know, truth can be found in so many different places.
just to clarify that. So sometimes we we say just like you know, Prabhupada did quote uh, Mahatma Gandhi at times, and he also quoted uh, uh, Albert Einstein. Both made statements in relationship to religious principles, but they, but they're at the same time we don't glorify nor give them any credit because they are on a materialistic platform. But here, what it's saying is that in a general principle, uh, a neophyte devotee likes to glorify these persons. So here, how he gets out of it, these devotees are called Prakrita Bhakta. They are materialist devotees, and they, if they regularly worship the deity, following the rules and regulations, they can come up to a higher standard. But they must also avoid committing offenses against other devotees. Um, generally, a Prakrita Bhakta will give his love. This is mentioned in the third canto when Prabhupada gives his purport to Kapila Dev. Kapila Dev has also mentioned these three classes of men in his discussion on devotional service in the third canto. And in there, it's described that the neophyte devotee will try, will try to show affection to the Lord and will also worship the spiritual master but they are envious and they cannot uh, associate with nor uh, serve um, their uh, fellow devotees. In other words, they consider only the spiritual master is worthy of service and not the other devotees. Now, this purport, and if you study this, you can get a complete understanding of this Kanista Adhikari. So there's a little bit of description of the three. If we go back to the other two verses, 11, uh, 245 and 46, we'll get a broader and more detailed description of, uh, this is the second class here. If you go to the, you want to go to, Yeah, this is the advanced devotee who sees within everything the soul of all souls. Uh, if you go down the purport very slowly, we can pick out a section so we can uh, give it a little bit of a succinct explanation here. Keep going. This is where it's always these verses, these purports are super long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a pure devotee, here, stop. A pure devotee is free from the tendency to enjoy things separately from love. He does not see anything in the universe as unfavorable because he sees everything as the expanded potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such as this uh, apparent uh, epidemic, it's not unfavorable when we, when we connect it to the process of devotional service. It can be used to expand Krishna consciousness. Therefore, even this uh, so-called difficulties with all of the restrictions connected to it can be used to uh, enlighten and elevate people in Krishna consciousness. Let's see. Such as the very purpose in existing is to give pleasure somehow or other to the Supreme Lord. Thus, everything that a pure devotee experiences moment by moment increases his ecstatic loving desire to satisfy the transcendental service of the Lord. I'll go down again. I mean, keep going. 
Okay, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> in this verse, Bhagavad Gita, Mother Most of Man indicates that there are those who are not gross materials, but there are but those who are not on the highest. So, like that. So, all of these other devotees are also mentioned. Okay. And as the, let's see if it goes down even further. It's giving a, a more of an overview of all of the three categories, Kanista. And there are, there are gurus for Kanista. There's a Kanista guru. There is a Bhadiman guru and there is an Uttaran, which is the highest. Okay, stop here. Stop. So if you want to really, and you should, study these three verses from the three, from the and you'll get a complete picture of these three categories, Kanistam, Madhyamam, and Uttamam, Adhikari, like that. Okay, go to verse number 46. And then we'll, this is the intermediate devotee here. And this is, Study this particular purport because this is where these qualities, characteristics is what we are trying to develop in the execution of our devotional service. Eager to preach to the conditioned souls, avoids the aesthetic class of men like that, gives their love to the Lord, makes friends with the devotees. All this is mentioned in this, uh, go down the page again. We'll see uh, what else is mentioned here. Uh, yeah. Okay, stop there. You'll see that in these uh, three verses, there is also mention of the other two within each one of them. And so it gives it a comparative study of the different levels. So uh, devotees want to know, well, where am I in devotional service? Well, you'll see, you can measure by the certain, these characteristics that are being explained here. Okay, so we can stop here and uh, open it up for discussion. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Devotees, uh, today we discussed, um, Guru Maharaj talked about the characteristics and activities of uh, second class devotees. Um, uh, so please, um, um, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask, just unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. Thank you. And um, also please remember to keep your cameras on if you can. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we, uh, we discussed all three categories, not just second class. Yes, like for today, sorry. Yes, all three categories, Mahabhagavat and uh, Kanishta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, encourage everyone to turn on their cameras. Hare Krishna. Um, okay. Can open up for discussion. So there is one comment, Guru Maharaj, um, from SP13. I'm not sure who is this. But uh, the devotee has said, Hare Krishna, dear Gurudev, I guess fashion of etiquette is very important for Madhya. Extremely important for all of the categories, but fashion of etiquette is the ornament of the devotee, is the behavior of a devotee. We are, in, in mentioning these verses, we are seeing the activities of the devotee along with certain elements of the behavior. But the behavior is more like the etiquette is the is the means 
by which one accesses a, the, the, the mood of devotional service in different situations in devotional life. Etiquette in the temple, etiquette with seniors, etiquette with juniors, etiquette with peers, etiquette in kirtan, etiquette in taking prasadam, etiquette in dealing with the non-devotees, etiquette in... Uh, etiquette means mere proper behavior, which is accompanied by proper speech also. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so um, by the time we are waiting, um, I would like to ask a question, Guru Maharaj. Um, we got Sri so, Devi has got her hand now. <laughs> oh, yes. No. Oh, yes. She, yes, Guru Mataji, you can go ahead. Thank you, Satya Bhamba. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your Lord's feet. This uh, discussion on... Uh, Madhyam and Uttam and neophyte devotees is like, I think really important for us to study very carefully so that we can make progress up and up instead of maybe falling back down to lower platforms. So I'm little, little, quite concerned about the fact that we can offend devotees and retard our progress. So uh, my question is this, uh, Unconsciously, I may be harboring a lot of prejudices against, uh, say, a class of devotees. Maybe I'm prejudiced against, just giving an example, I'm prejudiced against Black devotees or I'm prejudiced against, you know, North Indians because I'm a South Indian or something like that. And in the temple, it can come out as disrespect or neglect or ignoring them and uh, maybe even being offensive towards them because I have some deep-rooted prejudice against them, which I may not be consciously aware of. So how to overcome this kind of misbehaving attitude towards devotees? Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives a little um, example, and then we can expand on the principle. The principle, he says, uh, Somehow I continue to go through life because I give respects to all. And then that giving respects to all means always being in a mood of service in the association with others. You may not always be in the, have the opportunity to serve each and every person, but if you have that mood of service, and you exhibit that, then uh, you're always in the position to be free from these, um, what we say, inadvertent uh, tendencies that exhibit themselves, which are somewhat of the subconscious mind manifesting themselves in that way. But that is all on the bodily platform. South Indian, North Indian, Black, this, that, that's all bodily platform. To act on the bodily platform means to be in ignorance. Mm -hmm. So one should always try to be in a mood of service with everyone with whom one is interacting and always try to be a humble servant to everyone. That's how we can overcome this tendency? That's our position. Ultimately, we are servant of the Supreme Lord, but that servant, servant to the Supreme Lord manifests itself in the mood of service in all aspects of our existence. Mm. Even when we take prasadam, we are serving the Lord by honoring his remnants, which is his mercy manifestation. So when we're in that consciousness, when we take prasadam, we're actually serving Krishna in the form of prasadam. It's a matter of proper consciousness, that's all. If you see things in its external form, you miss the actual reality of each and everything that comes into your existence. You have to see behind everything, all the inanimate objects, such as the things that are called jada or dead, 
For instance, a computer is a dead thing. What gives it life is the person who operates it. So that computer is an expression of the external energy of the Lord manifested itself in this particular form. A car is like that, a piece of wood is like that. But that therefore you see everything in relationship on the Jada platform as this, the energy of the Lord to be used in the service of the Lord. Now, when it comes to the other energy of the Lord, the spiritual energy, which is manifested by the living entities who are locked in different material situations, then our consciousness is that, that each and every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And every living entity has an eternal loving relationship with Krishna. And then according to the etiquette, one interacts like like it says here in the Madhya Arikari. You have to avoid very carefully the atheist, non-devotee, envious. Now they are also living entities, but that doesn't mean you you serve them by avoiding them, because by avoiding them, you do not allow their poison to come out. Mm -hmm. And that's service to them by avoiding them. Although they are living entities. But then, in the other categories of groups, there is interactions accordingly. So the etiquette is friendly with all devotees and uh, um, merciful to the ignorant and, and those who are on a lesser platform. So we have to study this and practice this stuff in a day-to-day -day life. It's not simply will manifest itself automatically. You have to know these things and you know, have to practice activities that are complementary to these things. You can't just, just neglect it. But if you're having certain negativities towards people because of the external body they have, then you are simply on the material platform. That's completely material. Mm -hmm. Nothing spiritual about that. The Brahmins think they're better than the Sutras. That's all material. Mm. So one must very carefully guard against this when one sees it in oneself and work on it to eliminate all these uh, tendencies to uh, be prejudiced against others. Uh, yeah, let me chant Hare Krishna and you'll purify your consciousness. That's the whole idea of chanting. <laughs> yeah, that's... To get off the material platform. So when we want to, uh, when we say, let's avoid the atheistic non-devotees, does it also mean the, you know, so-called pious people who are, you know, doing their thing, they do their little bell ringing, but they're actually against devotional service. They may, like the purport describes, you know, they do all kinds of simple things and then they go to the church or they go to the temple and they put their five rupees and then they make their peace with whatever they have done and then again carry on. So what they're, not pi they're not pious, it's just show bottle. Can't call them pious. Hmm. Pious is a characteristic, not just a, a function of going to the temple. <laughs> it's a certain nature, it's a characteristic. They're not pious. So-called pious is the word. So-called because they appear to be, from the external point of view, acting like that in order to gain something material, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm still a little confused about avoiding a certain class of people. Uh, atheistic, I understand. Non-devotees, I understand. But I'm thinking about, you know, the, the 
Indian people, the, the Indian, I mean, the relatives that I have now that I'm going back to India, what should my attitude be towards them? They are not in devotional service. I don't know what they're really doing. Am I supposed to help them or avoid them? If you can help them, help them. If you can't, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Hmm. You, you know, for persons who don't want to change, and why waste your time? Relatives are not. This relative idea is a skin disease. We're thrown together with a bunch of people and we call it their relatives. And then all of a sudden, due to our karmic, collective karmic, complementary nature, we're all together. But <laughs> we find that our values are opposite. So why, you know, you have to associate with people who have similar natures and similar likings. You can preach to these people if they're open, but generally they're not open. So what we do is give them some prashadam. That's all. <laughs> and we say, here, here's some nice food. It tastes good. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then we wish him well. <laughs> Mataji, uh, Sukhaha Mataji, you have a question? Hare Krishna, Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your lotus feet. Um, actually, my question is answered by Guru Maharaj afterwards because I was going to ask the same thing that being a neophyte devotee, how do we deal with another neo neophyte devotee? Like we should be in association with the Madhyam. Um, uh, the Kharis, uh, uh, because the term of the Kharis are difficult to find. But if we get involved with the another um, neophytes, then I don't, I don't see any progress we can make it. But Guru Maharaj, you say that it's better to avoid them, isn't it? So well, uh, don't, don't stay on that platform. Practice the Madhivan platform. If you practice that, you'll elevate yourself to that platform. Yeah. So, so is it better to avoid those uh, no fights, other devotees, because they they will pull us back rather than helping us go up, isn't it? If you can't avoid that association due to whatever situation has been planned, you uh, somehow or other try to show them some mercy. But you shouldn't accept their values as being something that you find, you know, interesting or something you can benefit from. Their values are, you know, many people practice religious life in order to gain material profit. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a large majority of people. They see God as the order supplier and they have their orders. True. But Prabhupada said, God is not the order supplier, he's the order giver. You mm -hmm. take his orders <clears throat> rather than giving him orders. They want to give God orders. And when God doesn't fulfill their desires, then they give, they give up God. Mm. They say, why waste your time in the temple when you can be going to work and getting something tangible? <laughs> That's true. Otherwise, they just go to the temple just to show off that they are going to the temple, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. I mean, there's different innuendos. <clears throat> Sometimes people go to the temple just to show everybody else that they're, you're, they're, they're religious, but they're really not. Yeah, so many of them do that. They call, they call us and ask us, when is the prashadam time? We can go to the temple. It's like that. Yeah. 
well, give them some credit, give them, tell them the time. Yeah, I do. But it's like, are you still only going for Prashad, not for like any benefit apart from that? Well, Prabhupada established our temples as educational institutions or educational places of education. He said, everyone who comes should learn about Krishna and also be given the opportunity to serve. They should also be given prasadam. That is also required. But if the temple remains just a place where you can get prasadam, then, you know, you'll, they'll get a next life, they'll get a, a better birth. And maybe they can pick up from there. <clears throat> Better to associate with people on the second class platform because you can gain qualities and characteristics from those persons simply by that association. Mm. True. And then uh, you'll find that on the lowest platform, they're always talking about other people. Well, this people did, person did this and this person did that. This person went here, and this person, is, did you hear about this person? They keep it within the confines of devotional, uh, in the confines of the devotees, but it's all about, you know, it's called devotional gossip. <laughs> it's a gossip column. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, don't waste time. Life is too short. <laughs> That's what I've learned, Guru Mara. I try to help them. I try to um, preach them as well, but it doesn't help. It's just I feel that I'm wasting my time and energy there. So I'm yeah. now. Well, you, when you try, you can see, you evaluate, you move on. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Gurmat. Did you learn any verses yet? <laughs> I'm going to start. Yesterday was a bit, uh, I had my Gita, Bhagavad Gita class. So we did, we did chant that time, but I, I've forgotten that verse again. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to continue practicing. I'm not going to leave it, Gurmat. I'm going to, I'm going to keep asking you. <laughs> sure, please do <laughs> that. <laughs> that, that, that okay. <laughs> Sri Devi memorized 247 from Bhagavad yeah, Gita. <laughs> what is it? Adikada stayed mafalechu chadashana malkarma kalabhetu borna ma te sendosu karmani. You have a right to perform your duty, but you're not entitled to the results of activities. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. This is karma yoga. Mm -hmm. Very good verse, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, we have a, a question from Vrindavan Nath Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is, uh, related to uh, first class devotee because for second class devotee it's mentioned they neglect people who are against devotional service and i understood that somebody who is against krishna guru or pure devotee so how advanced or first class devotee treat such people um he doesn't make that distinction He sees everyone serving Krishna more than he is, even the non devotees. That's mentioned in the uh, Upadesa Amrita, in verse 6. I think it is verse 6 in the Upadesa Amrita, the different the three categories of devotees. 
The reason why he, he sees, he doesn't preach, he sees them as more advanced is that he sees that the non-devotees are serving the Lord by serving the external energy of the Lord, Maya. Maya is a pure devotee of the Lord, therefore they're all serving the pure devotees of the Lord, a pure devotee of the Lord. That's his consciousness. But there's no preaching on the first class platform. They have to come down to the second class for preaching. We discussed that yesterday. Mm -hmm. But that cannot be imitated. Although Radharani has the most intimate relationship with Krishna, all of the other, he, she sees all the other gopis as better than her. And is that also one reason, Guru Maharaj, that uh, second class devotee is the good position to be in? Because it's the only position to be in. You can't be first or third. Third, you're rejected. First, you, you know, you may be, you know, you might make it in first class devotee, maybe a few more lives. <laughs> but, <laughs> But a first-class devotee doesn't stay there, it comes down. Jayam Vishnupada Paramahamsa Pariva Chakacharja. That's the, they come from the first class down to the second class for the sake of preaching. Because first-class devotee doesn't make discriminations between devotees and non-devotees. Second class has to make a distinction for the sake of preaching. So Guru Maharaj, if anybody is trying to go against Krishna or pure devotee, then it's okay to sh either neglect or show our resistance or some kind of concerns in that matter. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. If you can convert them, yes, good. If you can't, neglect it. It's like if a someone blasphemes a pure devotee and you, and you hear it, you have three things, you, you have three choices. You know those three choices? Say you're in a, in some, if you are, if you if you are in the presence of someone who blasphemes the clear devotee, and you hear it, you have three choices: what to do. You know the three choices. Either neglect them, close our ear, or move away, or either show the resistance. No, the three choices is one. You have to give up your own life. That's one. Two is that you have to cut out their tongue. That's two. And the third one is to go away. So if giving up your own life is a little risky because you may be a Brahmana and giving up your own life means you kill a Brahmana, so that Brahma Hatya will stay with you in your next life. And cutting out their tongue, it's not so much, uh, it might run into so many problems, <laughs> such as civil problems, civil discipline, you know, you might bring in the, and the third one is what, we recommend to do as soon as as soon as that poison starts to drip out. Just like uh, I won't mention any names, I get I was getting three different emails from three different sources, which were criticizing devotees. 
I get two now, one of them stopped. As soon as I see that email, the name, delete button I hit. Don't open it, don't look at it, don't care what's in it, don't wanna know what's in it. <laughs> And today I got two from the same source. Always very intellectual, but very critical of devotees. I won't mention any names, but recently one person who is highly critical of devotees, super critical, one of the most outstanding criticisms of devotee, highly intellectual, very intelligent devotee, he died. He just died last week. And we can actually say that uh, it's connected with his you know, activities. So um, he went too far. I mean, he was just too much. <laughs> So you can't allow that to enter into your ear earlobes. <laughs> this poison, you distance yourself from that as fast as you can. <laughs> you run away from that. And you'll get it on the emails. You have to be careful sometimes. You get a little curious and you get these emails from these sources. You're not sure what there are. And immediately they're finding fault. Be very wary and very aware of what comes to your you know, inbox. Because <laughs> there's people who just like to pick out names and send things to anyone and see what kind of responses they get. <laughs> they do that. I have one person just jumped on me and just started bombarding me with emails and I didn't answer any of them and didn't respond to anything. As soon as you respond, it comes back double, no matter how you respond. And so all you do is hit the delete button. <laughs> as soon as you see the names. So I'm, I'm just warning the devotees because it's, it goes on regularly. I'm still getting from two other sources, these emails, but I, I know them ahead of time. And so I just immediately delete it and don't even look at it. So you'll get it too. <laughs> and if you get curious and you're reading that stuff, your mind is being affected. poison stay away from it we should only see the good qualities of the device numbers even if there is something negative there it's not it doesn't doesn't bother us and it's not our concern anyway thank you guru maharaj it's really, really helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah. The third alternative, just go away, is the the uh, recommended. But that shastra, what I just mentioned, kill yourself, kill the other person, or go away. So that's in the shastras. <laughs> That's how damaging it is. Thank you, Nath Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Any other questions, devotees? Otherwise, we have just gone past one hour, so maybe we can go on. Sajjav Vam is in a hurry to quit. <laughs> no, Guru Maharaj, I have a question to ask, but I'm just thinking, let's give others a chance. <laughs> Otherwise, I will ask my question. 
<laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so it looks like, like um, uh, when we hear the you know uh, Uttamadikari's qualities of the Uttamadikari, and uh, uh, we are still at like uh, I'm still at neophyte uh, state. So, do you think if the devotee can go back to Krishna from uh, first two stages and doesn't have to? We have to cross past every stage to go back to Krishna. Do we have to come to the Madhyam and then Uttama Dikari to be able to see Krishna at the end of our life? No. Hmm. You, 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 you gauge your, your the qualification is gauged by how, how much you develop your love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. That can be done by Madhyama Varikari also. If you develop love, pure love for Krishna, you go back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. But yeah, developing that pure love for Krishna is also as well <laughs> difficult. But yes, there is a hope that uh, serve your deities nicely. Krishna has come in the form of the Archa Vigraha. He's come, that's his mercy manifestation, so he, to accept service. So we worship the deities with love and devotion and keep everything on the highest quality standard. You can develop love for, your, for Krishna in the form of your deities. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. This is very nice and helpful. And gives a hope. Yeah, there is a hope. There's always a hope. But if you get to hopelessness, it's even better. <laughs> because when it's hopeless, then you realize I can't do it. Only Krishna can do it. Hope means I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> I meant hope is in uh, like even if I don't develop all those qualities which Uttamadhikari like you know Uttamadhikari sees all the soul equal as in uh, and I don't think in any of my lifetime I will have that quality of seeing you know that when, when even develop, the animals or the ants are at the same platform. If when you develop love for Krishna you'll see that way. So that comes automatically. Vidya, Vidya, Vinaya, Samphane, Gavani, Hastini, Gavani, Brahmani, Hastini, Suni, Chaiva, Supakecha, Pandita, Samadarshan. Samadarshan, equal vision to all living entities, sees not only the body, but sees the soul, Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna within different types of bodies. If you have love for Krishna, you'll see that way. You can't have love for Krishna. You can't say, I, you know, I have love for Krishna, but I don't see that. <laughs> it's not, it's contrary to love for Krishna. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically, it's uh, if you develop the love for Krishna, then you are Uttamadikari anyway, because you see everyone at the same platform and that the love for krishna means love for everything in relationship to krishna mm -hmm. and there's nothing outside of that that love means he knows how to interact with everything doesn't mean we we have to not understand we have to not misunderstand the definition of love love means for krishna means affection and uh, uh, a serving Krishna with loving affection, that's love for Krishna. But towards the external energy, it means seeing everything in relationship to Krishna and everything is the property of Krishna. And then seeing how to use whatever comes to my, you know, comes to me as a way to serve Krishna. They don't see anything separate from Krishna. Mm. And nothing is separate from Krishna. <laughs> That's the point. 
Yeah. Thank you. This is very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, devotees? Everybody looks like they're meditating tonight. <laughs> we have a very meditative audience. <laughs> Okay, did we conclude? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So tomorrow is Thursday and class is at, uh, tomorrow is at one, I'm sorry, 12.10. 12 10 um, Krishna, UK yeah. time. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Ambassador mm -hmm. Shri Prabhupada. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Tomorrow's class is uh, by um, Bhakti Sangha devotees. So it's 12 10 p.m. UK time. And uh, shall I announce the topic to Guru Maharaj? Please. Mm -hmm. Uh, the topic of tomorrow's class is Glories of Lord Chandra's Thakur, Srila Jiva Goswami, and Jagadish Pandit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot for one class, but let's see. Um, I would just like, I think that I see about at least there's three or four devotees who are on, who are from the UK. I have a personal request. Any devotee that's there in the UK, if you know of anyone, or if you yourself are traveling, to this area of the world that is Croatia or Slovenia, please contact me ahead of time. I need to get th certain things from the UK to here. And I would, I'm just humbly requesting anyone who's traveling, if they could carry these few items for me, uh, when they, if they come or if they know of anybody who's coming from the UK. So just contact me on my email and then uh, we'll work out the details. Okay. Thank you very much. Srila uh, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare. Thank you. Is that okay if I contact you, Guru Maharaj? Um, can it be um, parsally to you, Guru Maharaj? Uh, oh, Shamarani, speak that again. Can I, um, is that possibility to parcel it to you? It'll get, it'll get taxed. Okay. And it'll get taxed just as much as the 